Hello students, welcome aboard to the world of stars and heavenly bodies. And in our last lesson, we learned about sun, moon, stars and formation of day and night. Well, we also learned about morning and evening stars. And we also learned that stargazing is an enjoyable experience. Remember that we should watch the stars in clear sky and when we watch the stars we can spend hours and hours and then wonder do they make any shape in the sky well if yes then what are the names of the stars or the group of stars so in this video lesson you will be able to define the term constellation list the names of constellations and the season in which we can see Describe the importance of pole star and predict the positioning of pole star. Then you will be able to differentiate between stars and planets. So let's roll the ball. You must have seen a car coming towards you. When the car is far, then we see very dim light. But as it is coming closer to us, the light is unbearable. For our eyes. In the similar way, when a star is far away from us, then the light of the star is less, and as it comes near to us, just as sun, then it is million times bigger and shinier. Remember, our sun is a star too, and the sun appears bigger and brighter than other stars just because it is near to earth. Now stargazing, if we do for many days, then we will find out that the stars seem to move and they are arranged in some specific patterns. But actually, it is our earth that is moving. Okay. Earth is moving from west to east as we have done it in the last session. Now, the stars seem to be stationary when seen from the earth. And when the earth moves from west to east, it appears to, earth, to us on the earth that the stars moving from east to west. That is in the opposite direction. Now, I will show you one example. Look here. One side you can see the train is moving and on the other side the lights are moving. Now, when the train moves, are the lights actually moving? No. These light lamps are stationary while as only the train is moving. Right? But when we see both of them in comparison, then while sitting in the train, we can see the light, the people, the buildings etc. are moving backwards while the train is moving forwards. So now, you see, both are opposite. Okay? So, in this way, I will also show you one more example. Look here. The train is moving forward and the other things are moving backwards. Similarly, the earth is moving from west to east and it appears to us that the stars are moving from east to west. But, there is one star which is stationary or we can say that uh, it lies in the axis of the earth and that star is called as pole star or polaris, right? Just because it is called as a polaris means it is towards the north pole, okay? So, pole star or polaris or north star or groove tara is a special star which lies in the northern hemisphere. This is the north pole side. So, it lies in the northern hemisphere. And it appears to be stationary with respect to the earth's movement because it lies along the axis of rotation of earth. So, both of them are in the same direction on the same axis. So, in comparison to uh, earth, when we compare north star and earth, then the pole star or the north star uh, lies exactly in the same direction. 
and it's appeared to us on the earth that it is stationary, not moving. Now this pole star has helped the sailors in the sea to find the right direction towards the land. Because you know the pole star and the compass of the sailor, they both point to the north direction always. So in this way, the sailors can find out which way the land could be. And now let's learn more about the stars. You must have seen similar figures in the stars. And when some stars are arranged in a familiar figure shape, then those group of stars is called a constellation. In ancient times, you know, people studied constellation and gave name to some of the important settings. These were they were dependent on these stars to find the direction and to measure time. Right? The zodiac signs are also based on these constellations. Zodiac sign means your star signs. Like Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Libra, Virgo, Isis, etc. These are the star signs. Now, till today, there are 12 major constellations or zodiac signs and there are 88 total known constellations and if we see the earth like this there are millions and millions of stars and 88 star constellations have been known to us till now. Now let's define a constellation. A constellation is a group of stars that appear to form some recognizable pattern or shape in the sky. So, some type of shape they are making which is just familiar to the other things you have seen. Now, let's start with the first constellation. This constellation which is just like a pan with a handle and if you watch closely, it has got a beer shape also. So, this constellation is called Ursa Major. It is also called Great Beer or Big Dipper and Saptrishi. Okay, So, there are different names for this type of constellation. Similarly, approximately same shape is there, only this handle section lies at the below. This type of constellation is called Ursa Minor. And these two ends, these two stars are the pointers which are there on the Ursa Major and these pointers help us to locate the North Pole or the Pole Star. So, these are the stars of the Ursa Major. These seven stars which are arranged in this shape, in a pan shape to the handle, these are the Ursa Major stars. Now, you can see this Ursa Major uh, during spring season in the early part of night. The Great Bear or the Big Dipper appears as a ladle with a handle. Look here, ladle with a handle. This is the ladle, the, uh, in the utensil by which you put water. So, it is a ladle with a handle. This is the handle. And as I told you, these two pointers help us to locate the pole star. This here star is called the pole star or the north star. And just Close to Ursa Major is Ursa Minor. This is Ursa Minor. Both of them are visible during spring season. Our next constellation is Orion, also called as the Hunter. Okay, it is visible in the winter season, and you and it is very famous that when the three stars are set up like this, they form the belt of the Hunter. And hence, this type of constellation is called as the Orion constellation. And it is visible in winter. Our next constellation is Cassiopeia, which is uh, just like a W or inverted M. So, it looks like the shape of a lady who is sitting on a chair. This type of uh, constellation is visible in autumn season. So now you have known the names of few constellations and the season in which they can be seen.
well while watching the stars you may get confused that whether it is a star or it is a planet in the sky see if you keep on gazing at that a specific heavenly body or a celestial body you will observe that the star is comparatively stationary while as a planet keeps on moving every day every day the position of the planet will change and if there is a change you will find out that it is a planet if the position of that star doesn't change it is a star here are few of the points about uh, stars and planets so stars are the celestial bodies that emit their own light they have a burning core while as planets have a fixed path or the orbit in which they move and the planets are also called as wandering stars stars are very very far from the earth while as planets are comparatively closer to the earth stars have light of their own while the planets do not have light of their own and then their position changes but due to the distance it can be seen after a long time but the planets they change their position daily you know the planets keep on revolving around the sun and then the position of the planet changes every day stars are big while planets are comparatively small stars appear as dot shaped and planets appear as sphere shaped now there are millions and millions of stars in the universe and there are eight planets in our solar system and the stars twinkle and the planets do not twinkle so these are few of the differences about stars and planet if you observe the celestial bodies then you will find out that all these points relate to either a star or either a planet and also you must have done this in sst that the earth follows two types of motion around the sun one is rotation on its own axis like the weight is moving on its own axis and secondly it is moving around the sun so the movement of the earth on its own axis is called rotation this is rotation and it takes 24 hours to complete one rotation and the movement of the earth around the sun is called revolution and it takes 365 one over 4 days to complete one revolution you must have done this in sst now here are few of the important facts you may need to know the nearest star to the earth is sun and the nearest star to our solar system is alpha centauri the space is completely silent there is no noise at all the distance between the stars is measured in light years one light years roughly equals to 6 billion miles and the word astronaut means star sailor the second man on the moon was buzz aldrin and the moon was aldrin mother's first kid you remember who was the first one to uh, reach the moon and earth is the only planet which is not named after god these are just in interesting facts and we always see the same side of moon no matter we stand we no matter we stand wherever on earth so with this we end our chapter and uh, let's revise the important points the stars from a sun seem to be stationary as it is earth that moves from west to east the pole star lies along the axis of rotation of earth and it defines the north direction the group of stars that form familiar pattern are called constellation and we can see ursa major ursa minor in spring season orion in winter cassiopeia in autumn and scorpius in winter season the pointers on the ursa major point to the pole star the stars are different from planets planets are called as wandering stars 
and we can see a whole new night sky after six months. Remember, this is due to the revolution of the earth around the sun. And due to rotation and revolution of the earth, the same star appeared to rise four minutes earlier each day. Now, this is the activity number three, which is very important and it is to be graded. Right? What you have to do is take a black chart paper, some favicol or aluminium sheet or sticker star or uh, radium stars and then a glitter pen or a silver pen. Then you you have to uh, make or draw the stars right and then paste the sticker or you can make balls of aluminium and paste it on the point of the stars then join the stars with the help of a silver pen or a glitter pen. You have to make it presentable so that you can share it with your class teacher and then these are to be graded and put in the report card ultimately. Okay, these are few of the examples how you can present your work. So with this we end our chapter observing the sky and I hope that you had a wonderful time in this place and now it is your time to explore the wonders of the unexplored space. With this, we end our today's chapter. Goodbye.